There we go. Now we're live. Um, take two. So this is your look at the astrology for February 6th through 12th, 2023. My name is Katie Sweetman, and every week we gather live to look at the astrology. And, uh, you know, as I say, every week the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. So I say over and over again, the astrology is energy. It's the energy of time. It's how you live time. And then there's us we're human beings. So as we start the week, we're coming off of a powerful Leo full moon. Um, I love Leo energy. I don't think it's a sign that really gets us full due in astrology, because Leo talks about the sort of the spark of life and the spark of life, like a color, like a flavor, like a smell that makes us us. And this is where we get into that little sort of pulp culture um, definition of Leo, where it's about, oh, you know, kind of being a bit of a diva or a bit of a show off. And I, you know, I don't think that's always the uh, like a fair uh, assessment of Leo as an archetype and an energy. You know, above all, it's a little bit of a quiet week. M mostly the moon is driving the uh, the the story this week. Um, but we are going to have Mercury, like trying to like, get my dog in place. We're going to have Mercury finally get out of Capricorn this week where it's been for nine weeks. It's been nine weeks in Capricorn. It went into Capricorn. I think it was d December 6, 2022. We had a retrograde at the end of December. It went direct. I think there's, there's my dog. <laughs> went direct on uh, on January, uh, I believe it's 18th. And uh, we've been, you know, it's been a long time for Mercury and Capricorn. It just means that we've had to be more exacting with Mercury and Capricorn. We've had to really consider and weigh our options and take things seriously and use our voice seriously. But we're going to get a breath of fresh air as Mercury finally gets into Aquarius later this week. So... Let's look at your astrology for this week. And for those who do not know who I am, my name is Katie Sweetman, and I'm an astrologer and psychic medium he located here in the New York City area, just across the river in uh, New Jersey. And every week we gather live, as I was saying a few moments ago, yes, I'm a medium, which is not always something that comes through here, but this is sort of like some quick housekeeping. What's a medium? Well, there's a lot of ways in which somebody can be a medium. They can connect to people who've passed on, which that is typically what people expect as a medium. But there's also, you know, somebody that connects to different planes of energy and is able to capture that energy and able to share that energy. And when I work Work with people, for example, it's not to, to connect you to your loved ones, although they do sometimes try to push in. It's to connect to your guides, your guides who are here for your evolution, for the evolution of your life, the evolution of your soul, the evolution of your consciousness, and to see the astrology, your astrology as a map and a guide. That's how I use mediumship. This is a whole other conversation for another time. But um, you know, I'm thinking a lot about Leo and I love Leo. It's a sign that's so much about creative process and, and really doing something in a way that's unique to us. And I do astrology in a way that's unique to me. It's taken me a long time to be able to feel comfortable doing that. And I remember when I was starting out, like, you know, people were like, oh, you know, you can't do astrology that way. That's not right. I'm like, Astrology is a language. It's an instrument. This is a really good segue into the fact that we've just come off a Leo full moon. Even as I record this, the moon is in Leo. Leo, the sign that talks about how even though there's 8 billion people on this planet, there is only one you. So you play your music, do whatever, do it as you. Leo is where we take something from within ourselves and we put it into something. It could be making dinner for yourself or for your family. Some of you, you've heard me talk from time to time that I love to cook. That's not something that I can actually share with you all. One day I'm going to figure out what is the intersection between cooking and baking. I actually used to be in the food world, used to be in the IT world, food world. And the, and the intersection with astrology, maybe one day I'll do an astrology cooking show. I don't know. That's the thing about Leo. It gives us ideas. It gives us passion. It gives us joy, the joy to have fun and to play. So here I am every week and I play my music. I play my astrology 
for you all. And, and even when I sit down with a client, I'm looking at your chart and I'm playing it like it's an instrument. It's a score. It's got notes and bars and uh, it's got planets. It's got aspects. It's got zodiac signs but of course this is the way that i play your 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 chart there's you know of course the way that you play your chart it's your life but you can play that chart like it's like you know what was it chopsticks um or a little bit of piece of music but play it like it is your life play it like it's like the only piece of music in the universe because this is your life to live i'm getting a little bit on a tangent i actually talked about this in my uh, my newsletter if you don't if you're not signed up for my newsletter uh, make sure you sign up um it's the link is in the show notes i do put a newsletter out first thing every monday morning but i was like thinking about this leo full moon i was thinking about leo i remember 10 years ago somebody told me that i should not be an astrologer because i wasn't good if I had listened to her, which I did for about two weeks, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. I realize it's a one-sided conversation. Even when I started doing this back in June of 2019, like I like literally, I mean, seriously, if you go back and look to some of my first videos, you know, they're not gonna win any awards and, and maybe this is not gonna win any awards, but it's a space for me to share my voice, to get uncomfortable, to talk to you all again a little bit of a one-sided conversation and to share my perspective of astrology so this is just a little bit of an example because i want you all whatever you do whether it is you know you you do spreadsheets you you know whatever whatever is leo reminds us to find the one thing that lights us up that gives us life when people come to me you know, for, for one-on-one uh, consultations, they come to me because they're trying to figure out what I like to call Earth problems. I don't mean planet Earth problems. I mean Earth as in the element Earth. When is it going to happen? How much money am I going to make? Um, you know, what do I want to be? You know, in my career, am I going to be successful in my career? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not sure. This is my best interpretation of your astrology because nobody knows except for you. Um, but before earth comes element fire in astrology aries is the first fire sign followed by leo followed by sagittarius so if aries is that raw spark of life we see that with the beginning of spring i realize that's very northern hemisphere biased we get to leo i realize it's not leo season but we just had a leo full moon leo is fire it's passion it's joy it's the sign of the sun so you have to really, we all have the sun somewhere. You're thinking, Katie, I'm not a Leo, but you have the sun, the ruler of Leo somewhere in your astrology. It could be a Scorp it could be a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. You could be an Aries. Whatever it is, you have the sun someplace. And so to take that spark of life, that spark of light, and to put it into something, put it into your life, put it into your work, put it into your family, put it into whatever it is and, and and i get it we're in we're in tough times and maybe we need this sort of injection of leo energy to remind us exactly who we are and to not listen to other people i mean this in the best possible way of course we need feedback and we need to you know you know kind of refine our process of course and then there's the other fire sign, which is Sagittarius. And that's not the, the, the light that lives within us. It's the light that reveals. It's a very different type of energy. Sagittarius is the last fire sign. So I'm, I'm getting really into element fire today. Fire is motivation, inspiration, animation, being able to give life to something, creativity. So we need that fire energy. Like I said, tough times. We seem to be navigating these days do not forget your fire energy and at the end of the day there's only one you on this planet sort of the example that i use for leo energy is that you know by the way i love classical music we will never hear beethoven the way that beethoven played beethoven because so he's he's not here on this planet anymore so this is where we have to really honor the fact that there is something that lives inside of us it's precious we take it with us after we die that's why you know fire energy it's hard to really get a grasp on but you know whether it's music or a composer or whether it's somebody who you know in our life they, they're really good cook and then they pass and then we can never 
taste their food the way that they, they made it. We can never hear their music the way that they played it because that element, fire, isn't here in this world anymore. This is why fire is so precious in astrology. Kind of a little bit on a soapbox, uh, but like I said, I had this like big, bold Leo full moon yesterday. So how are you all doing? How is your Leo full moon? We had a lot of, uh, let's say, intense energy in this Leo full moon because it was picking up on aspects to Uranus, it was picking on aspects to the nodes. And we're at the midpoint of the eclipses. And maybe we're at a turning point this week. Maybe we'll be at a turning point this week, even though it's a little bit of a quiet week. Like I said, most of the narrative is driven by the moon this week. But when you are the only person that can do something, it cannot be duplicated. So this is like a kind of a little segue to a quick housekeeping note on scammers. I cannot tell you uh, how many times you all DM me on Instagram telling me, oh, there's somebody who's cloned your, well, they say first, you say you hacked, but my account got hacked. My, this is the I, the former IT professional and me talking, my, my account did not get hacked. If I, my account got hacked, it means I lost control of my account, which I hadn't. Somebody has cloned my account and is pretending to me, be me. But the thing that's kind of hilarious is that they're using words I would never use in my life. I'm from the Northeast in the United States. I would never use words like beloved and grand rising and the energies are strong in you. No. Um, so don't fall for it because upon occasion I do get a message where you, you gave this person money. Don't don't do that. I'm so sorry. Um, but this is you know, I have to say this from time to time because this is literally a weekly occurrence on Instagram. I don't know if, you, if somebody were out, out there works on Instagram, talk to your engineers. This seems like a simple fix to me, like the fact that there would be like all these clone accounts. Um, and there's like no way for me to report it. Uh, I know that you're like, no, no, you can't. Nope, I tried, tried so much, so I tried so hard. So I, I actually did not get highlights, uh, Brandy, but uh, maybe maybe just, you know, my Jupiter and Leo and my, my, my Sag rising makes it seem like I got highlights um it's just the way the light the light's hitting it um actually i was supposed to get highlights today it just it fell through but nevertheless here we are we just again we came off a of leo full moon uh, don't uh if, if you get a suspicious message that's purporting to be me on instagram it is not me um don't typically get that on facebook More, mostly it's like the spellcaster spam on uh, facebook i try to zap that pretty quickly um not the right energy for the work that i do um but you know like i said i have to kind of periodically remind you all don't fall for the scams it's not just me it's pretty much i think every astrologer who's on instagram or any you know psychic medium or professional um it's pretty annoying um but there you go there's my that's my that's my spiel so what else is going on we've got my webinar that's happening on uh saturday not saturday sunday F sunday february 12th i'm doing a two hour it's probably going to be a little bit longer uh webinar on saturn and pisces i know you all have been hearing me talk about this from time to time but we've got two major changes uh in the month of, of march and you're like wait March next month. Uh, yeah, we've got two major changes next month. The first is Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is like one of the major hands on the on the cosmic clock, whether it's your own astrology, whether it's the astrology, how we all collectively experience it. When Saturn went into Aquarius in March of 2020, yes, March of 2020, it signaled a new hour. It had not been in Aquarius since uh, what 91 through you know the very beginning of 1994. So this happens only once every 30 years. Saturn takes 30 years to go through each of the zodiac signs. So we have about three years. Sometimes it's like a little bit here and there. Like um, for example. Saturn went into Aquarius in March of 2020. It jumped out, I think it was the 1st of July of 2020, and went back in in December of 2020. And Saturn talks about the lessons of life. You've heard me talk about it over and over again. 
I love Saturn. I realize Saturn's kind of a drag sometimes, and it's um, been a little bit of a hard, let's say, a hard lesson with Saturn Aquarius. We've heard, learned some very hard lessons around friends and community, social connections, social issues, social causes, social justice, fairness, equity. All of these are Aquarian themes. Aquarius is also systems and networks. And the last time Saturn was in Aquarius in 1991, etc., that was the birth of the internet. I mean, I realized it was pretty nascent at that at that time, but that's when the internet became, you know, the beginnings of what it is right now. And then here you go, you go to 2020, and everybody's on Zoom, everybody's on camera. It's just kind of funny how things evolve right on time. That's the beauty of astrology. Everything happens right on time. So. Saturn going to Pisces hasn't been in Pisces since 1994 through 1996 with there was like a like a month and a half I believe in like the summer of 1993 it was in it was in Pisces so Aquarius is a very different sign than than uh than Pisces but they are but both Aquarius and Pisces are what are called the last two signs of the zodiac it is not about the individual. It is not about what's happening to me, although I am, of course, I've been impacted by things on a, on a larger level the past three years. But if Aquarius is society and humanity, what's beyond that? Well, question mark, question mark. That's actually we're getting into deeper spiritual and esoteric themes. And so now the lessons go from Saturn and Aquarius to Saturn and Pisces on March 7th. And so for the next three years, we're going to be learning lessons around Pisces, compassion, surrender, forgiveness, deep emotional connection. Also, you know, really trying to uh, find out existential questions. Pisces ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is an energy that's trying to make sense of life. Jupiter rules Sagittarius. We're trying to make sense of life by looking outward. Jupiter ruled uh, Pisces. We're trying to find the answers inward. So it's a bit of a, or it's going to be a little bit of an inward time uh, the next few years. Um, the difference between 2023 through six versus 1994 through six is that Neptune is in Pisces. So that's going to be an interesting addition. Uh, Saturn is so much about structures, matter, manifestation. Neptune dissolves the boundaries between the physical plane and the non-physical plane. So we have the we have an evolutionary planet in the same sign as Saturn. They're actually not going to, it's a little bit of a technical point, they're not going to make a conjunction in Pisces. They'll do it at the very beginning of Aries in 2025 or 6. But um, they will be talking to each other over the next few years. So yes, we have a big change. March 7th, Saturn going to Pisces. And then on March 23rd, Pluto makes its first visit to Aquarius in 250 years. Yes, 250 years. I know it's crazy. Actually, when I was looking at the ephemeris today, because this week Mercury does uh, meet up with Pluto and Capricorn on um, Friday, Friday the, the 10th of February, and it's the last time Mercury makes a conjunction to Capricorn for 250 years. I know, crazy. Um, but we are wrapping up Pluto's time in Capricorn, a sign that it has been in since January 2008, and then again in November of 2008. Uh, when, when Pluto goes into Aquarius this year, it's only for a few months. So what I'm telling people is pay attention. We're going to just sort of make a, uh, you know, kind of get a sense of what's happening because we don't have, um, you know, this has never happened in our lifetime. We can't use like, oh, okay, well, five years ago, Pluto was in Aquarius. No, like we have, we don't, we can't go back to, you know, 250 years. And I, like, and, and I think it's a little too easy to go back and look at history. But, but the reason why I'm cautioning against that is because the world is incredibly different than it was in the 1780s and 90s. We can't compare historically like they didn't have iPhones they didn't have you know the fact that you could travel the world uh you had you know, back then you had to get on a ship and it took what like a week to cross the Atlantic or you know a few weeks across the Atlantic probably a few weeks um if they weren't using steamships anyway um so yeah big changes ahead and we've got you know we'll have more to talk about uh in March but this is all to say to you that I am teaching a webinar 
on Saturn in Pisces. So this is going to be your first look at what what is Saturn, why is Saturn so important, uh, what we can sort of get a sense of what Saturn's time in Pisces is all about, especially as it picks up with Neptune. Um, we will have Saturn meet up with the lunar nodes, but this won't be until 2024 when the nodes get into Virgo Pisces, my, my, my natal nodes. And then what can we expect uh, for each of the 12 signs? Because it's a major change in the personal hour for each of the 12 signs. And if you are going through the Saturn return, if you are 28, 29, you were born with Saturn in Pisces, or even if the second Saturn return, you were born, what was that, 64, 65, 66, Saturn was in Pisces, I believe. So what is the purpose of the Saturn return? What, what is the Saturn return in Pisces? So that webinar um, will be Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. It'll be about a couple of hours. Uh, if you can't watch live, you can still sign up to get the, the video. So all the links are in the show notes. So there we go. Um, let's, uh, let's look at the astrology of this week of February 6th through 12th, 2023. Yeah, I said it's a little bit of a quiet week. We are still under the energies of the Leo full moon as we start the week. So a full moon, it punctuates the lunar month. So we have a new moon. So we had a new moon two weeks ago, and then we have the full moon and the full moon puts something into the spotlight. Sometimes we are like, we have to take action. Something demands our attention. We see things for what they really are. And sometimes things get a little dramatic uh, around a full moon and even a full moon on the lunar nodes and it can shift things quite quickly like you know for example uh, we had a really bad earthquake in turkey uh, today the, sometimes when there's um, connections to the lunar nodes you will see earthquakes for example then we go into tuesday february seventh and the moon starts to pull into Virgo. So Virgo is a little bit of a different sign than Leo. Leo is all fire and passion and play. Virgo is reality. Well, how do we take the creative vision of Leo and put it into something? And maybe you had an illumination, maybe you realize something and then you have to spend Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with uh, the moon and Virgo getting really uh, organized and, um, you know, kind of creating a sense of systems. And that's where Virgo, the Virgo moon and the sun and Leo are actually going to play off really well together because Aquarius is large systems. Virgo is small systems. What are you talking about, Katie? Well, Virgo talks about the systems that run our daily life. When we get up, hopefully you brush your teeth, uh, you, you have some coffee, you go to work, you walk the dog, maybe not in that order, you go to, you know, make dinner and meet with friends. That's sort of that sense of like, these are the things that have to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So the whole, the whole the wheels stay on the bus. Aquarius, it's, a, it's about that, but it's on a larger level. Now we're getting into society and humanity. It's not personal day-to-day -day stuff, Virgo. It's the stuff on a collective level, on a community level. I need to make sure that if, uh, you know, I, I put my garbage out because it's garbage day, that it's actually going to get picked up because what happens if it doesn't? Well, then it starts to pile up. So we need these larger systems and frameworks to allow there to be sanitation, for example. This is an example of larger systems. So I'm getting, you know, maybe this seems a little bit fast for your life, but we saw what happens over the past few years when the larger system starts to break down. Well, Saturn Aquarius, Saturn is in Aquarius square Uranus. So that said, use the next few days to really look at the systems of your life, small systems, large systems. What needs to happen? How do you implement change? How do you put the things that actually give, bring joy to your day-to-day -day life and make them part of your day-to-day -day life? Um, you know, a lot of people, it's like they're, they're run down, they're burnt out. Well, what happens when you do 10 minutes of something that you absolutely love each day? How does that propel the system in a new way? Because these systems can either support us or they can crush us. And that's the duality of Saturn. Saturn is either the supporter of life, it's the supporter of the spark of life, it allows us to grow, or it crushes us into the ground. That's the other side of Saturn. So 
that's where we can get very practical this week. We get into the later part of this week. And then Mercury gets to the end of Capricorn and it makes that conjunction that I referred to earlier to Pluto. The, the conjunction is the last one we're going to have for another uh, 250 years. So we've got the energy of Pluto really bringing us through the middle of the week and Pluto doesn't pull its punches. Pluto is, you know, if Virgo is real, if the Mercury and Capricorn is very real, here comes Pluto. And Pluto is like, this is what you bring with you. And this is what you don't bring with you. You want this to happen? Well, this needs to happen. And so maybe that's where we have the Pluto energy, either to clear space or to get us to really inhabit our choices or inhabit our voice or to inhabit our power. And maybe we're also having some pretty either powerful, difficult, blunt conversations later this week. That's the thing about Pluto. It doesn't sugarcoat. And Mercury is the planet of voice and communication, for example. Then Mercury uh, gets into uh, Aquarius on the uh, on the 11th of February, and it's a breath of fresh air. Aquarius is an air sign. You no longer have Mercury in the sign that's behind the sun. We can feel a sense of forward movement. It's now we have Mars is direct in Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. We're even going to have the Moon in Libra later this week, so we're going to have a lot of air energy. You might feel that there's some movement, um, some some conversation, some news, some information as we get into the end of this week. This weekend, the moon's in Scorpio. So we're kind of getting into some deep, dark emotional material, the sign of the south node right now, picking up also on eclipse energy as we come to the last quarter moon. Um, but it's a pretty powerful lunar month. And, and when we get into past that Pisces new moon um, at the end of February, I think it's like the 20th of February, we can debrief on like, okay, well, what shifted, what changed, what revealed itself to us as we went through the, the Aquarius uh, lunar month that began, I think it was January 21st or something like that. So that is your look at the astrology. Let's see how, uh, let's say, Mercury going into Aquarius and maybe these energies of the Aquarius, uh, Aquarius of the Leo full moon are showing up for each of the 12 signs, starting with Aries. Aries, we talked about this last week, but that Leo full moon really put in the spotlight you in a way, meaning what makes you you, a sense of creativity, self-expression, creative fire. It is Aquarius season. Aquarius is what's called your 11th sign. So there's the push and pull between the needs of friends and community, sort of looking towards the future, being part of the bigger picture, but then making sure that you don't lose yourself, for example. Since we were talking about Saturn earlier, Saturn is beginning to wrap up its time in your 11th sign. And so for you to start to get very clear about how has your social circle your social network shifted over the past few years. Who is left? And, and Saturn can be a little bit brutal when it comes to friendships, when it's going through the 11th. It's sort of the people who are part of your community in 2020, maybe you're not part of your community right now, but the people that remain, perhaps they are stronger, the people that you actually wanna bring with you into, into the next chapter of your life. This all prepares you for March when Saturn goes into the 12th. And so we'll talk about this when we, when we get closer to it. But you are starting to prepare for a time for your life where, especially as the sun gets into Pisces, where it's about the, the, the shedding of, of, of the past 30 years. And that's a big thing to talk about. Yes, we'll talk about this later. But maybe you're sensing that there's some changes on the horizon that you need to sort of do a lot of deeper inner emotional and spiritual work. Um, but that said, Mercury finally gets out of Capricorn. Capricorn is your career sign. And it goes into the sign of, of friends and community. And maybe this is, you know, kind of that coda that I was referring to, you know, with Saturn coming to the end of your 11th of like, all right, who do I want to be? Who do I want to, to have be a part of my community? And who do I do I not want to? Um, because that's the role of Saturn is to make a, a part of our life stronger. And then it's maybe shown the relationships that weren't strong enough to come with you into this next chapter of your life. 
Taurus. So we're just coming off of a Leo full moon. And for you, Taurus, Leo is the sign of home and family. So to really pay attention, what was the story that came up around home, family, your living situation? Um, if it's not the physicality of home, perhaps it is the emotionality of home. This idea, where is home? Who is home? Well, of course, home starts from within and really needing to make sure that your, your emotional roots are being taken care of. That said, Aquarius season, especially as we get to the end of Saturn's time in Aquarius, is starting to wrap up this larger chapter that's been about your professional life. Really to either build your professional life, uh, to recalibrate. For some people, it's been a pretty big recalibration of the professional life or to really get clear about the role that you want to play in the world taurus uh, that said mercury finally gets out of your ninth sign and so this has been this sort of deeper examination about what you believe in what you stand for what's your truth how do you take your your knowledge and wisdom seriously and it's going to start to bring that mercury energy into your professional life it's a breath of fresh air but mercury is also going to start to press you to make some serious decisions as you go into the uh into the next uh into the, into the end of february gemini so for you gemini mercury is your planet and it's been this long time in capricorn and Capricorn is your eighth sign. And for a moment, uh, Gemini, I want to go back in time. I want to go back to 2008. Maybe you were much younger or maybe you know exactly what was going on in your life at that time. But what happened in 2008, Gemini, was that you started a 15, 16, yes, 15, 16 year chapter of doing a lot of deep inner work. That amount of time is so vast, so it's really hard to see it in the day to day. You really have to zoom out to really appreciate it as this larger chapter of your life. Pluto was in Capricorn. It still is, but it's starting to move out. And this has been a time where Pluto has been sort of in a way systemat systematically dismantling a lot of these deeper emotional structures and really getting you to transform and to reform. Again, it's hard to see that in the day to day. I wanted to highlight that because as Mercury comes to the end of its time in Capricorn, it's going to meet up with Pluto one last time. Mercury is your ruling planet. So this is not, you know, like a little tea party thing. Like this is Mercury meeting up with Pluto for the last time for 250 years. What has Pluto taught you? Do you know who you are? This is the time, the eighth, the eighth sign, what I call affectionately the eighth room, is the revelation of the deep self. It's a time of emotional and spiritual alchemy. Who remains? And it may be uh, the version of who you thought you were in 2008 is not who you are right now. So really appreciate that. And um, even though Mercury is meeting up with Pluto, it's that one last uh, push for transformation or it's that one last moment for you to be in your power because then Pluto will take you into what's called the ninth and then you start a 20-year chapter, yes, 20 years, where it's about really taking a lot of the experiences that you learned over the past uh, 15, 16 years and to say, okay, what do I believe in? What do I stand for? What's my truth? What's my conviction? What's my philosophy? So this is the time when you've had to discover something very deep and maybe something that you didn't even realize was there a decade plus ago. That said, Aquarius season, it is, you know, Aquarius season for you is that time where it is about truth and wisdom and philosophy and foreign travel and education a sense of conviction and justice and right and wrong and that's precisely where Pluto's going to go starting on March uh, March 23rd of this year. But that said, the the Leo full moon really put into the spotlight information. Uh, you know, maybe you received information. Maybe you received information that sort of challenged you, for example. Um, but that said, we are all preparing for Saturn's arrival in Pisces. This will happen uh, March 7th again. And that's going to be a shift of a major hour for you, Gemini. More on that later. Cancer. So Cancer, I say it every week, we're counting down the days, we're counting down the week. 
until Saturn leaves your eighth. So we what are, what are we on? It's like eight more weeks of Saturn in your what I what I like to call your eighth room. It's important for you to start to appreciate. I don't know if maybe appreciate is not the right word. Maybe it's too soon to say appreciate, but at least to account for Saturn's time through the eighth since uh, 2020. You will only have Saturn in the eighth, and, and you know this this statement may change depending on what your rising sign is. Um, so you will only have Saturn in the eighth for about three years every 30 years. It doesn't happen very often. It's this period in our life where we have to do a lot of inner transformation work. And the idea is that to not necessarily be brutalized by Saturn in the eighth, but to ultimately discover something that had been hidden from you. And that's the deep self, the deep unconscious, and even sometimes the inner saboteur. In this revelation, you're going to come out of the eighth and bring that energy with you into the ninth. And then the universe will ask you, well, after everything that you've been through, what do you believe in cancer? And you start this process of getting very clear about what you stand for, what you think is true, what's your philosophy, and what's your faith. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, but that said, it is Aquarius season. This is sort of you are wrapping up this time. And I think Saturn, Saturn being Saturn, it wants to see something. Because Saturn is the planet of where things start to become real and concrete. Well, the eighth is more of an emotional space. So it's not necessarily something physical. Um, it can be wealth and property because it's a very traditional way of looking at the eighth. But it's also, it's like, what have you built emotionally over the past few years? And even maybe you've experienced loss. I mean, I know a lot of cancers who went through periods of losses over the past few years. Um, that said, the Leo full moon is just a reminder to come back to life. Come back to the things that light you up and give you joy because you, you've probably been a bit taxed or even drained by the past few years. So don't forget that um, Mercury finally getting out of your seventh of relationships and joining the sun in the space of intimacy, vulnerability, transformation, and emotional reformation. Um, Leo. So you just had a full moon in you. You had a full moon in Leo. So in a way, Leo... You are in the spotlight and, and really look, pay attention to some of the things that I said in my introduction, because how do you use this full moon to really get back to what lives inside of you? What makes you you? What makes you a Leo and into the person or rather the, you know, you were born to incarnate this archetype of the sun of, of joy and passion and the archetype of the divine. I'm kind of getting off on an esoteric tangent for a moment. But that said, this has been a little bit of a hard time for Leo. And, and this is starting to wrap up because there's been all these eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio and Saturn and Uranus. But this is wrapping up uh, Saturn's time in your relationship sign. And as you get into the very beginning of March, just start to be present with the fact that this is the end of Saturn's time in the seventh and Saturn likes to build something likes to create something likes to kind of make something concrete. Well, this is happening in relationships. So this is going to be different for each Leo, but is what Saturn has been building the past few years, a new relationship, a stronger existing relationship. Maybe it's ended a relationship, for example. So this has been a big time in your life, Leo, especially with Uranus up in your 10th of career. It's been probably you know, 2022 and 2021, maybe very powerful, transformative, and even key years for you. That said, Mercury gets out of your six. Maybe you've had a lot of like work to do, or maybe it's been about health and wellness. And then Mercury will get a bit, bit of fresh air going into Aquarius later this week. It will give some life to Saturn's time in Aquarius. And maybe you've got some big decisions to make as you go into the end of February and even big decisions to make about relationship. Virgo. 
So Virgo, Mercury is your planet. It's been spending nine weeks in something called your fifth sign. We've been talking about this for nine weeks. And so this has been a long story about the, the discovery, but also the definition because Capricorn where Mercury has been is about definition. Who are you? What makes you you? Are you taking your talents, gifts, and abilities seriously? I know it's Capricorn, but are you taking the things that actually nourish you and give you life and light you up seriously? Are you owning your authority, for example? That said, um, Mercury is going to leave Capricorn. It's going to make a what's called a conjunction to Pluto. It's um, only the last conjunction to Pluto for 250 years um, on uh, on the 10th of February. It's a power day. It's a day for you to really step into that energy and to be transformed by it, to be reformed by it. And maybe this is the coda to a lot of the deep work that you've been doing while Mercury's been in Capricorn since December six then it goes into Aquarius a bit of a breath of fresh air for you but it does it's in the same sign as Aquarius now this has been different for all Virgos but Saturn has been in your sign of health and wellness also projects and work either you've been working very hard for the past uh, few years on a project or trying to get your your human life in order or maybe even to focus on health and wellness. And for some Virgos, I know because some of you are my clients, a health challenge came up in this time. So Mercury going into this space sort of brings you back to this larger topic in your life, your your day to day life, your duties and responsibilities, getting things organized, systems and networks, health and wellness. Mercury will meet up with Saturn. Um, I think it's later this month. I can't remember the date. Um, but Saturn, you know, is putting you a little bit on notice, and maybe you've got a you know a little bit of a serious uh, time um, as you go into the end of February. Saturn demands. Saturn says, "Oh, you can handle this. I'm going to give you more responsibility." Saturn promotes us. Saturn's like, "Oh, this you've you've earned this title," but Saturn can also um, tell us when we're not showing up and tell us when we haven't hit the mark. So we, we may have to feel that we're hustling a bit as we go through the rest of February. Libra. Libra, first we'll start with uh, Venus. Venus is your planet. It's in Pisces right now. Pisces is your sign of um, health and wellness. But, you know, have Pisces in this part of your chart. Pisces is kind of a funny sign to have this part as a health sign because it's so sensitive. It's sensitive to, you know, loud sounds and like harsh foods and harsh environments. And so this is a time for you to really make your day-to-day -day life beautiful, to, to imbue it with a sense of ritual and perfection and craft and beauty, for example. And maybe you are focusing on health and wellness right now. So there's that. Um, Mercury, which it's been, you know, let's actually, let's go back in time, Libra. Let's go back to 2008. And I know that that was a really long time ago, but that was the year that Pluto went into Capricorn. And you began a 15 to 16 year process. Yes, 15 to 16 years of doing a lot of deep digging and even emotional excising. What does that even mean? This has been a time when you've had to work, um, depends, everybody's different, um, maybe some very deep themes around home and the family. Where is home and who is home? There is the physicality home of home and there's also the emotionality of home. And so you've had to really you know, clear that deep emotional and psychic foundation, that's what Pluto does, to rebuild it in order for it to be stronger. Mercury has been in this space with Pluto and it makes its last conjunction to Pluto for 250 years. And so maybe you've got some serious decisions to make about family, about home, about your living situation. But these are decisions that are part of a larger story that take you all the way back to 2008. Mercury will go into what's called your fifth. It'll be a breath of fresh air. You are an air sign. Aquarius is an air sign. But, and but, Mercury is going to be in the same sign as Saturn. So this is a time where, don't forget Libra, you've been in a three year process where Saturn has been trying to get you to take yourself and take your talents seriously. So here comes Mercury and you've got to really take yourself 
and take your talent seriously. Maybe it's make some choices. Maybe it's express yourself. Maybe it's to use your voice, for example. Uh, but that said, you are coming off of a Leo full moon. That Leo full moon really put the future into the spotlight. Sometimes it's having a vision of the future. And for some Libras, it's also about really looking ahead, looking beyond the horizon, sort of like, what do I want the next year to be, the next five years to be? What are my hopes and dreams and wishes? And maybe with the uh, push and pull with Saturn and Aquarius, what do you need to do in order to make those home, those hopes and wishes and dreams a reality? Scorpio. Scorpio, I was actually thinking about, well, I am a Scorpio. I was thinking about like, it's been such a long time with Mars and Gemini, and I'm going to be really happy when Mars, I never thought I would say this, Mars gets into Cancer. Um, that's that's an inside joke. We will, we will talk about that joke later when Mars finally gets into Cancer. But for right now, Mars has been in Scorpio's uh, eighth sign. It's just been a heavy emotional slog at least mars is direct right now we can at least celebrate that um but that said uh it is aquarius season and aquarius season puts into the spotlight a larger story around home and family that has been with you since 2020 Scorpio, I want you to go back and to 2020 and, and, and where, you know, where was home and family there? And I mean, like, whether it's the physicality of home, the emotionality of home, your relationship with your, your, your family, your biological family, your parents, or even the family, your own family, the family, your children, for example, your, your spouse. And maybe you've made a big move. Maybe that move has been in the search for home to figure out where you're going to put down roots. So I'm just kind of putting a lot of different things on the table, Scorpio, because as we get to the end of Aquarius season, this will take us into next week. And then the end of Saturn's time in Aquarius for 30 years, that will take us into the very beginning of March. Saturn starts to really show us the result of what we've been building. And maybe it is a, an emotional result, like we know exactly where home and family is. It's here. Maybe it's the physicality of like, okay, no, I'm going to stay here. Like I'm going to put down roots. I'm going to buy a house or whatever. Or maybe it's starting a family. Or maybe it's, it's reaching out to family. Or maybe it's actually severing ties. And sometimes that has to happen because the family that we're born with is they don't support us. They're, they're, they're toxic, for example. So this is really <clears throat> Aquarius season that's really putting, um, bringing energy into this process. And the Leo full moon, Leo full moon was about career um, and sort of the ambitions of the your, your professional life. But you know, what's the ambitions of your professional life if you don't have your base secured? So that said, Mercury finally gets out of your third and it goes into your fourth and it's going to create a bit of movement in your home environment. So start to pay attention to the stories that are starting to come up, the serious decisions that you have to make because Mercury will be in the same sign as um, as, as Saturn, for example. Um, but that said, yeah, we were coming to some big shifts and maybe for you to look at Aquarius season as a sneak preview of Pluto's arrival in Aquarius on March 23rd. We will talk about this next month. Um, Sagittarius. So Sag, um, not the big shifts that you're seeing with some of the other signs, although you are coming, um, to getting very close to Saturn's arrival in Pisces in eight weeks, and that will be the start of a major shift in your astrology. We'll talk about that next month, but it is Aquarius season. Aquarius season is about really, for you, Sagittarius, taking your voice seriously. It's about education, information, communication, and maybe, you know, making sure that you're, you're actually communicating communicating, for example, with Mercury in this long time and in, in, um, in, in Capricorn, it has been a focus on money, uh, income, spending, you know, maybe these deeper questions about what's really a value and sort of, you know, money and work, especially because Mercury is a career sign for you. Really see what the story is as Mercury makes that conjunction to Pluto that I've been talking about. See, last conjunction is going to make to Pluto for 250 years. 
Mercury, again, is a career planet, but it's also a relationship planet. And there are these deeper themes around self-worth and value that are all bubbling up with this. And for you to go back, Sagittarius, back to 2008, because that's the year that Pluto went into your second sign of money, income, value, worth, material stability, but it also went into the sign of self-worth for you. And you know, do at this point, maybe it's a big question, Sag, do you know your self-worth? Do you know your value? Do you know what you will accept into your life and what you won't accept into your life? How has your relationship with money shifted, whether it's you know over the last nine weeks or even over the last 15, 16 years? That said, you just had a Leo full moon and Leo for you, for you is a sign that very much picks up on these Sagittarian themes around truth, faith, meaning for you to really broadcast and express something that is, is what you believe in, it's what you stand for. It's a conviction, for example. It's a very, very philosophical moon for you, but it does play on, um, especially with Saturn and the sun and the third about really needing to write, speak, communicate, teach. Maybe you want to travel. Maybe you're longing for foreign travel or long distance travel, for example. Uh, I will say that Jupiter, it's still in Aries. So you have that sort of dynamic fire energy going on in your chart. Use this time to continue to create, get back to you, get back to what makes you you and lights you up and gives you um, a sense of joy and passion in your life because Jupiter will leave Aries and it will go into Taurus in May. So it'll be a shift in May for you, but we will we will talk about that later. Oh, so Mercury getting out of Capricorn and going to Aquarius will be a, a breath of fresh air for both career and relationships because it's just been stuck. Um, it's been stuck in Capricorn for so long and it will also pick up on the air of Mars and Gemini. So it's probably going to be a, a, a much busier time as you go into the rest of February and even the beginning of March. Capricorn. So we've got eight more weeks Capricorn of Saturn, which is your planet in the sign of Aquarius. Saturn, which maybe you can appreciate because it's your planet, it really talks about the physicality of life, the things that we're building. Now in Aquarius, you know, Aquarius is not typical, typically um, about the physicality of life because it's more about these larger social issues or social systems or friends and community. For example, like who are your friends, who are your community? but it is in your second sign and so as saturn comes to the end of your second sign you know going into the very beginning of march saturn's like what has this time built for you is your material life more secure than it was in 2020 do you have a sense of value and worth that you didn't three years ago maybe you've made investments maybe you've made purchases maybe you've had to really pivot hard because saturn was in and and you know, still is in this uh what's called a tight square to Uranus, but that's starting to pull away. And it's going to be a shift on March 7th when Saturn goes into Pisces. That said, you just had a Leo full moon. That Leo full moon put in the spotlight a lot of deeper emotional material and kind of getting into the intimacy and vulnerability, for example. That said, Saturn, not Saturn, Mercury is coming to the end of its time. In Capricorn, it's been there for, for nine weeks, and it's going to go into the second sign of money and income. So Mercury is going to kind of give life to a lot of this work that you've been doing for the last three years. And so you may see a lot of movement, needing to make some serious decisions, and maybe even make some serious decisions about spending, investments, and even how you earn a living. Aquarius. So Aquarius, we got, what, eight more weeks of Saturn in your sign. And, you know, typically you're like, oh, you know, Saturn's in my own sign. This should be good. Well, I think it's been a little bit of a heavy time for Aquarius because Saturn has been in this what's called a pretty tight, tough aspect to Uranus. And sort of for you to reflect on the life, your life as it was in 2020 versus how it is now. Bare minimum, um, Saturn in Aquarius has been a time about you really taking the next step up in your life, um, having to, to really take on the mantle of responsibility, sometimes to the point of feeling like everything is on your, your own shoulders, which that's the, the downside of Saturn being in your own sign. And maybe you've made a lot of growth and maturity 
over the last few years, but it's really kind of pushed you to get out of your comfort zone at times. That said, that Leo full moon that we're just coming off of, it put the spotlight on relationships. And so maybe it's about really looking at the relationships of your life. How do you have people in your life that are actually helping you with all this duty and responsibility so everything is not on your own shoulders? Keep in mind that Uranus has been shaking things up in, in the sign of home and family for you. It's been a bit of instability. My hope for you is that there's going to be some shifts once Saturn gets into Pisces on March 7th. And then you're going to start a period of your life where you need to really look at money, income, uh, spending, how you earn a living, your relationship with value and worth, and even how you create stability, material stability in your life, if I didn't say it already. Um, but that said, Mercury finally gets out of Capricorn, and um, I think Mercury going into Aquarius uh, on the on the on the 11th will be a breath of fresh air. It's just, it's really made you have to get behind, go behind the scenes, really pay attention to your intuition, really start to feel into your blind spots um, and to let some things go in preparation of perhaps some bigger changes that are gonna happen in your life. Do keep in mind that on March 23rd, uh, Pluto for the first time in your life is gonna go into Aquarius, uh, start of a major change in your life, Aquarius. We will talk about that next month finally Pisces so first Jupiter is your planet it's still in an in, in Aries Aries is your second sign of money and income so the larger umbrella of time that you're in right now is really focusing on your material life whether it's to kind of create more income create more material stability make investments uh, spend whatever for example or to get even into these deeper themes about value and worth self worth for example uh, your planet jupiter will change signs in march i think it's the sixth not march uh, uh may so we got a little bit of time before that bigger change in may that said pisces you are coming to the end of saturn's time year 12 we talked about this last week aquarius season is this reminder that you are wrapping up a 30 yes 30 year chapter because when uh, Saturn goes into Pisces on the 7th of March it really brings you into this new beginning in your life where it's like taking you know, going to this new chapter like a lot of responsibilities and duties are on you you have to sort of be Saturn which means be the parent be the be the adult in the room um, start to make some serious decisions in your life um, that said that Leo full moon really did put the spotlight on health and wellness and whether it's your physical health emotional health spiritual health really use the rest of February to clean out these are the, the things you do not want to bring with you into this new chapter starting on the 7th of March but that said Mercury finally getting out of Capricorn it's going to go into your 12th and it's sort of I think Mercury is giving you that one last look of all the work that you've been doing to clear out prepare to organize and to get ready for a new life and so maybe you have to make some serious Serious decisions because Mercury is a major player in your astrology it's your relationship planet it's also the planet of home and family so it's like that last big push before a new life so there you go that is your look at the astrology of February 6th through 12th 2023 sorry for a little bumpy start <laughs> like a dog running around I had like the they'll try to get the software to work but here we are Anyway, so do join me on Sunday, February 12th for my two, probably closer to two and a half hour presentation on Saturn and Pisces, your first look at what this bigger, big change is going to be for 2023, all, all the way to 2026, and how it will be a major change in the astrology hour and how we live time uh, and the structure of time going into the next few years. You can sign up for this webinar on my website, empoweringastrology.com. You can also get it in the show notes. Um, book a consultation with me. I know many of you are my clients, and um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Oh, sign up for my newsletter. Follow me online at Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Spotify, all, all the things. But it's always nice to see familiar faces every week. I really appreciate you all. I appreciate your support of my work, and I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.